Okay. Um, well, welcome. Great to see everyone here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, I think we're going to kick things off, and we'll do our best to kind of stay on time, which is a rarity <laughs> in government, to, to say the least. Um, I think what we'd like to do is uh, I'm going to kick things off. We're going to have a little presentation by um, uh, Jeff Rose, Phil Bryce, uh, who really represent parks, talk a little bit about where we are today, where we've come from. Um, I've asked DOT to join us as well, just to understand uh, the aspects of DOT, what we do, what we don't do, um, in terms of uh, participation uh, with the local community here. Um, and then I think what we'll probably do, just to make sure I don't want to talk completely out of turn, um, we have Rusty uh, and Jim. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Jim and Fred. And Fred. And Fred. But is Rusty? Uh, here oh, as well. hey, there you are. How are you? Good to see you. Um, took me for Rusty. It's like a, a spitting image. Um, but what, else, what we'll do then is probably turn it over to you, Jim. Then. Okay. Okay. And you guys can talk a little bit uh, from the, the town's end. Uh, we'll try not to eat up too much time. We're going to kind of go through the presentations kind of as quickly as we can just to lay the groundwork. The most important part of this is that it is a public meeting, and we want to give everyone a chance to stand up, and uh, if there are comments or questions or suggestions or whatever it might be, make sure uh, that those are being heard. If we do not get to them by the end of the time, there is, uh, I think, these are these in the back? Yes. We included these in the back. Please let us know, either whether it's, it's by calling, by sending emails uh, to any of us. Uh, all the comments, if we don't get to them here, uh, we'll be obviously taking it in con into consideration and would like to uh, have a chance to respond to them um, as appropriately. Um, I guess what, I, what I'm going to do, again, not to go into too long of soliloquies, the key aspect of what's going on here is, look, we know the town is pushing a lawsuit and all that against the state, uh, and as much as some people say, well, don't deal with the town, I have just the opposite uh, approach. It's, okay, let's have a public meeting, let's make sure we get, uh, and I don't want to say an airing of the grievances, this isn't Festivus, <laughs> but, um, but, <laughs> but, but that's a little bit of just making sure that we truly understand what the pushes and pulls are. I'm always a believer that better communication can take care of a lot of these issues uh, in terms of understanding of not just what's happening in Hampton, but also what's truly happening at the state level and the pushes and pulls and what we're able to do there. Um, you know, we want to be as flexible as we can. Um, and I think to date, there's been a great partnership here. I, I really believe that between the business community, between the parks, between the state, between the locals, um, and we just want to be sure that we can maintain those relationships while understanding what some of the uh, the key issues are. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jeff. Great. Um, th thank you, Governor, and uh, thank you, everyone, for, for coming out here this evening. It's always a, a pleasure to be at Hampton Beach State Park, and as uh, my park structure appropriately referenced we have our tables the wrong way so we could be we should be looking out at that <laughs> spectacular view but it's always uh, it's always a treat to be able to to showcase this beautiful facility and the the state's investment here to this uh, this great uh, pavilion and this redevelopment project um, and we take a lot of pride in that the state has made a significant capital investment here at Hampton Beach uh, State Park over the last eight years uh, to the tune of about 20 million dollars and this certainly being the the crown jewel of that investment but but we really have consistently tried to uh, recognize how important Hampton Beach State Park is uh, it is uh, one of the premier uh, state parks uh, and it's also one of the premier beaches really throughout the, the throughout the country and certainly here in the Northeast and we take uh, a great deal of pride in that um, you know one of the things that the governor referenced is that we have tremendous partnerships and we don't just do it alone we do it through those partnerships and we really are proud of those partnerships at that operational level uh, working closely with the chamber and working closely with the village district and recognizing how important the Hampton Beach Area Commission is and working cooperatively with the community and working with the public works and the police and the fire uh, and collectively we have a lot to be proud of I mean we have a, a world-class premier facility that a tracks uh, tens of thousands of people on any given summer day to, to come here to make their family memories, to spend their discretionary dollars, and we think that's fantastic. Uh, and one of the things from a state parks perspective that we want to make sure that we always are is accountable, accessible, and recognize that we can't do it all on our own, but it's only with the partnerships that we have with a lot of people here in this room and throughout the community and really throughout the state. 
So one of the things that we've been able to do is implement uh, public meetings, what we do before every season and at the conclusion of every summer season. And it's been fantastic. We get really good participation. We get a lot of ideas. What's going well? What could we be doing better? What are operational things we could do? How can we make sure that our joint ventures are mutually successful? And that's been fantastic. And as a result of that, we've been able to make additional operational changes. We've now done things like we're plowing the sidewalks for the first time. We're doing things like keeping the, uh, the bathrooms open year round. We're plowing the parking lots. We're extending the seasons. We're investing into staff. We're investing into operations. We're in investing into additional capital. So we're really proud of those types of investments into those year round and extended seasons. We're picking up the trash year round. We're maintaining the beach. We're getting new rake equipment. We're getting new communications equipment. And that type of investment that you see the state making is spurring investment all throughout the community. And when you see about the types of investments that are taking place downtown, it's really something that Hampton should be proud of. And I've, I know I'm proud to know that the state's <laughs> investment has turned and made such a benefit to the community beyond just the state park. And what we're doing in terms of some of those things that I just referenced that have come out of those, those, those area meetings at the beginning at the end of every season, those are things that we're doing because we want to be good partners. We're not doing it because we're um, gleaning additional revenue. In fact, those are t usually those amenities that I just referenced are all taking place off season. So by extending what we're doing, we're really trying to provide a benefit back to the community, and we're we're really pleased with that. You know, we have a lot of wonderful state parks. We have a lot of demands throughout our system. We have 93 properties that we have the privilege of managing. Um, and that's you know very unique in the way that we fund our state park system. And not all parks generate money. In fact, we don't even charge at more than half of our state parks. So it's really important that we make strategic investments and capital investments into those generating park, uh, those revenue generating parks. And we're really pleased what we've been able to do here. Now, are there tensions locally? Sure, that's a, that's a natural thing. Is the community frustrated with the way the state distributes rooms and meals tax? Sure, I mean, there's probably a forum for that. I know the legislature has, has weighed in on that. Are there things that we can be doing or the town would like us to be doing differently at the municipal level or at the, at the state parks level? Perhaps, and we're always open. We're trying to make adjustments. We're trying to make investments. We're trying to continuously improve our operations here because we know how important it is. So, so we look forward to continuing the dialogue. That's something that we always want to try to do. We'll continue to do that. That's my pledge to you. I know it's something that's really important to the governor. He consistently stresses with his leadership team how important customer service is, and we're going to be right there at the forefront of that. Uh, speaking of which, as I close out, we do have handouts um, of some of those investments that I just referenced that we've made into the state park. Uh, we're really proud of it. But uh, as the governor referenced, we also always want to hear your comments. So please feel free at, in the back corner there. There's that additional information about how you can reach us at any given time. Um, and then I'd just like to also recognize uh, Phil Bryce, who's our parks director, who does a fantastic job managing those th 93 properties uh, across the state on our behalf. Uh, in Parks and Recreation, and then Meredith Collins, who is our Seacoast Regional Manager, doing a fantastic job right here uh, at Hampton Beach. So with that, I'll turn it back to great. the governor. Great. No, that, uh, that was great. And where are these handouts in the back? In the back. Okay, yep. great. Wonderful. And again, this is fantastic in terms of getting literally down to, the, to um, every dollar in detail, which is, which is great, which is great. Uh, I'll flip it over to DOT, uh, who's you. been a big partner in, in all of this. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, glad to be here and uh, talk about some of the things we have to look forward to uh, here in Hampton. A number of uh, major projects coming forward in the in the ten year plan. One of the first ones that we're looking forward to is uh, uh, addressing the Hampton Harbor Bridge. It is the number one state red listed bridge. Um, over the past several years, there's been debate and discussion about whether it should be rehabilitated in place or 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 replaced um, in the 10 year plan two years ago when we updated it. Um, we were, looking, we're moving it forward as a uh, replacement project and uh, have $40 million programs beginning in 2023 to um, replace that bridge. Now, there's certainly a lot of work to do leading up to that. Uh, we have engineering programs to begin. Um, evaluating uh, exactly uh, what and where and how to go about with that replacement and certainly a lot of uh, public participation and input from the community as we go about uh, developing that project. But 
certainly a major uh, bridge replacement project right at the en entrance to uh, the Hampton Beach area uh, that we'll be um, working to deliver in the um, upcoming years. Another major project in the 10-year plan um, that we're looking to work closely with the town on is the reconstruction and rehabilitation of Ocean Boulevard. Um, I know there are ongoing concerns about the condition of the sidewalks and the drainage and the pavement surface. Uh, those concerns have led, again, cooperatively through the development of the 10-year plan to program a project, uh, a fairly substantial project, about $8.1 million, uh, similarly programmed in, uh, to begin in 2024 uh, with reconstruction of, um, of Ocean Boulevard. In advance of that, we've been working with the Hampton Beach Area Commission to uh, update the master plan and update the transportation portions of the transportation plan. So attending those meetings and working collaboratively to develop those concepts, and the goal is to uh, parlay that coordination with the Hampton Beach Area Commission directly into the preliminary engineering. So um, I know in the upcoming year, 2018, we're going to be working to um, help finalize those concepts with the um, Area Commission and then re uh, roll right into the preliminary design uh, to implement and further develop those concepts. So um, in addition, I know we'll have some resurfacing uh, along in 2019, so certainly areas to address those needs. And I know we have had um, discourse uh, about maintenance of sidewalks in the Ocean Boulevard in the Hampton Beach area. And uh, I am now optimistic that through the development of the Ocean Boulevard project, uh, we can address those issues um, and reconcile them to the <coughs> development of that uh, of that project. So, great. That's it. Thank you, Jim. I'll throw it over to you. Yeah. Welcome to the Governor Sununu, the Commissioners, Park staff, the Directors. Hampton Beach is the crown jewel of the state and of the state park systems. Been rated one of the top tourist attractions in the state, one of the friendliest towns in the country, and is always rated as one of the cleanest and safest beaches in the country. And that's due to the partnership of the state and the town working together. Speaking for the town, I can say that the police, fire, and DPW have an excellent working relationship with the operations staff here at the State Park. Uh, over the years, the town also has made many investments into uh, the infrastructure, into our sewerage and our drainage, which has allowed the investment to take place on the east side of the boulevard here. So it's both, again, it's a, it's a partnership between the two. The shared responsibilities are stated in the 1933 deed. We have to understand, though, that year-round population in Hampton is approximately a little bit under 15,000 people. During the summer, the population can go to 100, 150, which makes us the largest municipality in the state, much larger than uh, Nashua, Concord, Manchester. And with that, our DPW, our police, and our fire are strained. They're stressed. Our town budget is stressed also because of that. So, you know, working with that that partnership and that shared revenue and that shared responsibility and a clear definition and a clear means of communication between the state and the town is extremely important. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim. Um, I guess I would open it up to in terms of a table discussion at this point, if there were any questions between the folks up here. Um, I mean, I think that's all pretty straightforward. But. Okay, great. Um, so again, you know, this isn't just a, a session just to highlight all the great, you know, the, the great efforts the state has, has made. I think we've made some good stuff. And if you look at what the total amount of the investment, uh, essentially between opening this facility here all the way up to the Route 1 and, and potential bridge project coming in 2025, you look at over a 15-year span, the state investing upwards of $75 million uh, here. We, we don't do that for because we like to spend $75 million. We do it because it's huge, huge returns, as Jeff referenced. It, it's a partnership return, right? It's the business side of things. Um, the, there's a great return to the state. There's, there's um, a great opportunity uh, to drive this as one of our key uh, resorts, if you will, uh, a key revenue enhancer, not just for the state, but for the, for the local businesses here. Um, when it comes down to the, the issue of uh, room and meals, 
uh, in, in the sharing of that revenue. I think Jeff brings up a great point. I think that's a discussion that is absolutely worthwhile to have uh, at the state levels. Uh, I, I don't want to go into that too, too much, given that my former occupation uh, was running a resort, but I am very sympathetic. <laughs> Let's just say that. Very sympathetic to reviewing that. It's a legislative issue, and I think it definitely has to be taken up, and not one unique to, to Hampton or, or even that little resort town up in, up in the, the White Mountains. Uh, all across the state, this is a very common theme that we've heard uh, in terms of the concerns of how a lot of that room and meals and shared revenue uh, is, is essentially redispersed to provide for a lot of the uh, operation. A lot of what we're talking up here are fixed capital costs, um, uh, but in terms of the true day-to-day -day operational costs, which Jim is highlighting, it does put a real strain on the town. There's no doubt about that. Um, it's been a, a, a partnership that's existed for uh, since the 30s. 1933. Since 1933. Um, I'm the youngest governor in the country, but I can tell you it's probably before most of our times here. Um, so uh, again, uh, kind of re-exploring that I think is, is uh, definitely worthwhile and endeavor. Um, at this point, again, I'm just to kind of, if people don't mind, I just want to move things along and make sure everyone in the crowd has, a, has an opportunity to come up and, and speak if they have issues and concerns. Um, I guess I would open it up uh, to the floor for anyone who, who has comments uh, on the topic. I, and Governor, I know, yeah. um, oh, no, please I mean, go ahead. I think uh, there was uh, Sal. I know is is here, and he had uh, an obligation yeah. that he had to head out to. So we were going to oh, sure. ask him if he wanted to. Oh yeah, make a brief if, comment. if you don't mind, that yeah. would be great. Yeah, so if folks don't mind. <laughs> Welcome, Sal. How are you? Great. Would, and I apologize. Would you mind coming up? Sure. Do you mind? Uh, I don't know. Maybe back in this corner. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's move the microphone to the end there, just so we can. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for coming here today. I think it's a great opportunity to understand more and more what's happening up at the beach. You know, when I was at first asked to come up here and uh, make an investment in the beach, uh, I was a little concerned. But it was when you, the state of New Hampshire, made the investment on the beach on the sidewalks, the beach itself, this building that we're in here motivated me and my organization to purchase what is the, probably the largest asset on the beach today. And I just want you to know, we just didn't stop there. We just recently acquired the McDonald's site. Why? Because it's part of a master plan that our organization has put together to redevelop the entire two sites. So with that, I just can't thank you enough. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to developing that parcel and the McDonald's was a key site for us and it really would took a long time to acquire it. But we are anxious to tell you that there are more acquisitions down the road. We're in negotiations with them right now, which once again is part of the master plan that we're putting together. So with that, we continue to make an investment with the Lapoli companies and our partners up at Hampton Beach and it's a direct result of the investment that's happened by the state of New Hampshire. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sal. Appreciate that. Um, and I guess I would, uh, if I may, uh, out of courtesy, uh, if there are any uh, reps or uh, state senators or any active, I know Nancy's here. Hey, yes. Uh, well, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Give me two. Now, um, I guess I was looking for Representative Phil Bean, who I know is quite active. I assume he's here somewhere. <laughs> is Phil Bean really not here? He's in the meeting enforcement. Well, that's quite telling on many levels. I think we'd all agree. Uh, okay, yeah, so this. Oh, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good morning. Good afternoon. I said good morning. Can you hear me? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, my name is Mike Edgar. I'm rep from Hampton. Um, you mentioned the meals and rooms tax. You know, we do need to get, somehow get some more money. And on uh, Thursday, there's going to be a. Bill uh, HB uh, 1609 is going to be heard. And just, instead of reproportioning the amount that's there, which sometimes gets difficult and, and contested quite a bit, I think we ought to be able to do a livery and die. You know, we should have an option locally to put some type of a small surcharge on our meal, uh, rooms here. And uh, they are sort of hotel rooms, which encompass a whole bunch of the definition in the RSA, encompasses a lot of things. That, um, former uh, Senator Nancy Stiles has worked on some of these things over the years quite a bit, and uh, and I think she is still somewhat involved from what I heard. I'm um, looking forward to, uh, to seeing her on Thursday. Um, so I would hope that uh, we would be able to consider something like that. It's again, we, we, the towns or the city should have an option to be able to do something within within a certain degree. It's 
They shouldn't be held back from doing that, especially when there are certain ones that, that you know that do accumulate certain expenses that others don't. So uh, I just, that's basically what I wanted to say, and I would appreciate any support in any manner that we can get for this. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, if I if I'm right, I believe that's something that was taken up legislatively uh, in the last session, but I don't think it quite made it. it, it, it yeah, sorry, there, there was one. Well, it, and it's coming back. Okay, it's Great. coming back, and it's been had a chance to massage it a little bit to uh, just a little bit to help make it flow. Mm -hmm. You know, the money flow and some of the definition flow, and working with the town. So it's, uh, it's 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 a little bit a little bit different, but it's it's the same uh, same idea. The same idea is. is Give us the option to, uh, to do something. The option, the reasonable. flexibility to instill a local tax, essentially. That's correct. Okay. Great. Yes, how are you? Thank you, Governor, so much. Okay, my name is Regina Barnes, and I am a selectman in Hampton. But I am not speaking for my board tonight, and I am actually, I would prefer not to speak as a selectman if that is okay. I would like to. Uh, speak as a resident of Hampton for over 40 years and I want to say to State Parks that I've definitely seen major improvements this uh, winter season after the storms even right after Christmas you guys had it picked up in I think about two days so thank you very much it looked great and there is major improvements this year that we've noticed people that live down here and myself personally but I do want to say one concern that doesn't seem to ever actually get discussed between the state and the town that I would like to take this opportunity to mention. Route 1A construction I know has been in the works for a long, long time, but just several weeks ago, the beginning of this month, we suffered a pretty, uh, I don't even know what you call it, a blizzard, a uh, flood, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. it really, uh, people that live west of 101, uh, sorry, Route 1A, really took a toll their homes businesses things like that and I'm sure they're all figuring out exactly what has happened in damages but I was wondering if perhaps maybe the state could help us work well we could work together and maybe even get the federal government involved because I really think that the whole New Hampshire shoreline needs to be looked at and really examined in order to sustain what we have in Hampton as a town and also what the state has in Hampton so I just like to take the opportunity with everyone here to say that that's uh, my biggest concern I would see right now. So, sure. Governor, if you could uh, fix, fix that. What I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Fix so, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, a couple. Of, when, when is the one A? I'm looking at you a little bit. Yeah. The one A is, I believe, within the ten-year highway plan. Yes. Yeah. Would, would you know when it's scheduled? It's I don't scheduled know. Uh, funding yeah. beginning in 2020. Um, 2024. So that's still a ways out. Right. Um, so when uh, I don't know when they uh, when Councillor Prescott did the 10 year highway plan gasset uh, meetings. I don't know if there was one out here. Was there? There was. But, and, I, I, and I don't mean to ask a question if you don't have the answer. That's like, do you know if this was brought up as an issue as part of gasset? I, I don't know. I, 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 I guess it would have happened project pre was flood, but the was, project was Yeah, I mean, it was, it was noted that the project is in the 10 year plan, still on the 10 year plan, still on the project, still on okay. schedule. Okay. We, uh, we won't and, get. And oh, that is limited. It's kind of limited looking at the Ocean Boulevard area. I mean, you, you referenced the whole um, the whole seacoast. I know exactly. we yeah. still have, I know we have issues with, um, and there's been concept designs working with the, uh, looking at the shale, shale pile wall all up uh, Northampton and into Rye and, and stuff, and, 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 and big issues that there aren't real. Um, Solid answers. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess one of the ideas would to do would be to look at, uh, and maybe we could do it because the ten-year highway plan hasn't been signed into law as a bill yet. Uh, we could look at it through the legislative process in terms of moving it up. That would probably be the next logical step, and that ten-year <coughs> highway plan will be delivered to the uh, legislature actually this week. Um, so that that might be an opportunity there. Given uh, for those who, who uh, just to, to interlude a little bit, the flood that we uh, just experienced was incredibly severe. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the state doesn't didn't qualify for uh, potential emergency disaster relief funds mm -hmm. from the federal government so we don't qualify uh, under under the single storm under that uh, but I think to your point it's a very valid point uh, the long-term plan in terms of where we go not just with 1a with the drainage system with the right. sidewalks where, where there is a sidewalk you can't even see the there's a sidewalk in, in mm -hmm. half of that uh, place right now the road just blends right in uh, to the sidewalk but obviously is going to be critical so 
the, I think the, the next logical step would be maybe working with the legislature to see if we can move that up. Can I just add one more thing? Please. Because I know some people might be thinking of this. I just personally, for what I've seen, I don't live down here, but I live not far away. Drastically, the past four or five years, it's gotten drastically worse. And I know I live at the end, I live on one time. <coughs> I know that the sea level is rising, but I think there might be other things that maybe haven't happened properly, mm -hmm. state and federal wise, that might be contributing factors that are just making it. Even worse. Specific example, the drainage. To, to the, to the, the flood drainage, and the drainage, yeah. Dredging, things like that. So if we could really start looking into it, I think. Uh, <coughs> sure. Very good point. All right, thank you. Yes. <coughs> Steve LaGrange. I'm the uh, elected chair of the Hampton Budget Committee, but I'm a resident here at Hampton Beach. <coughs> I live at Ward's Head just up the street. And I want to mention um, to Jeff that the work that you're doing here, I've lived there for a number of years. There used to be a time when there was nobody down here at the beach. All the bathhouses were closed. The sidewalks weren't plowed, nothing. There, wasn't, there weren't any employees. Now there are full-time, year-round employees. We have bathrooms that are opened. We have sidewalks that are sanded and salted, um, parking lots that are done. So kudos to you, kudos to Meredith, doing a great job. The, 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 the issue I have kind of um, <coughs> goes along with what Regina was just saying about flooding. Big concern. And the town of Hampton presently has three warrant articles on the warrant this, this coming year, um, $100,000 to study a, uh, the marsh and how we can uh, prevent the flooding that's going on on the, the west side of Ashworth Ave. In the town of Salisbury, just down the road a piece, they worked with the federal government and the Army Corps of Engineers and built a wall in the marsh area to prevent that type of flooding to go on. We need to do similar things. The town of Hampton cannot solve the flooding issues because we need the state, we need the federal government to do it. We can't do it as a town. And um, and this would be directed to Bill, is it, from DOT? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. DOT. DOT, yeah. So you're talking about uh, redoing Ocean Boulevard. I know traffic studies have been done um, and putting roundabouts and stoplights and all kinds of different things, potentially, potentially, potentially yeah. not especially. It's still in the works. But I want to point something out that I noticed, and I haven't heard anybody talk about this, and you really need to pay attention to it, because you can't rebuild Ocean Boulevard if you don't take care of that wall that's in front of my house. Now, several months ago, I talked to the town manager in his office, and I said, you know, I said, Fred, about 15 years ago, they added two feet mower to that wall. And I said, you know, they're talking about doing Ocean Boulevard, and I've been witnessing in the last five years, as Regina said, more and more flooding incidents. And I've been here a long time, and I can say, well, 20 years ago, it didn't happen at all. But in the last five years, it's happening on a regular basis. And when the water, I know that it was a, uh, they called it a bomb cyclone last week that we had here. <coughs> and we had three extra feet of flooding, a normal flood tide might be 10.6 feet. That was measured at 13, and that's why Ashworth Ave was under three feet of water. Now, so flooding has become something that, well, we, we, we have to think about it, but we'll all be dead before you know, anything really happens. No, that's not going to be the case. What I've been witnessing, and I'm right here at ground zero. I'm retired, so I look out the, my front window, I see the Atlantic, I look out my back window, and I see the marsh. So I see the flooding from both places. And I want to get to the real point is that wall, uh, I was talking to Nancy Stiles about it on <coughs> Thursday. I walk down the beach on Sunday. If you walk at low tide and look at the wall, the ocean side of that wall, where the vertical members are, each every 50 feet, there's a, a steel structure. And the wall has deteriorated to the point where at the base, the cement is gone, the steel is exposed to salt water, and of course when steel rust and corrodes it expands and it breaks away more of the concrete. And I was going to take some pictures. 
I will take some pictures and I will send them to these email addresses for you to see. But right across from um, Jonathan's, which is just up the street, in that particular 50-foot segment, not only are there vertical breaks where the, the member is, the steel member, and, and a lot of missing cement, but there's actually a horizontal crack and it looks as if the wall's budget, bulge, yeah, bulging a little bit. And at that very spot on the ocean, on the street side, the, the sewer this past summer collapsed. And they had to do an emergency, go in there and, and repair it, and refix the sewer itself, rebuild the structure, and then re top again, right at that very area. And that's where the crack is. That, there's no need to remake Osha Boulevard if you're going to have a wall that's going to collapse. So. It really needs to be looked at. I just wanted to point it out. I didn't know if you were aware of the condition, but um, I'll send pictures. Yeah, no, please. To these, to these things, okay, for you to take a look at. You just need to include that. Again, um, so I mentioned that the town of Hampton, we have a hundred thousand dollars to study from the harbor all the way up to High Street to figure out what we're going to do with the marsh. We have another warrant article to uh, address King's Highway, which is up at North North Beach, Hampton. Um, was that fifty thousand? Yes. Yeah, another fifty thousand to address that particular street that floods. And uh, and then there was another warrant article to uh, to finish the Gristmill Dam, which is a water control. You know, by having this dam. It will allow us to be able to capture water and not just let it continue downstream and, and flood those those neighborhoods. So we actually, and that's another hundred thousand. So that those three, you know, you can see that we're 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 taking this on as a town to study it and to do things. We're actually doing something about it. That Grismo Dam. That's a project we've been working on for six years. So with this additional hundred thousand dollars, that'll bring the total. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that the town mm. has spent, and, and to get that job, uh, the project to where it is right now, shovel ready, another hundred thousand, and they'll be in there working on that next year. So the town's doing its best, but we need to we need the state's help, mm -hmm. which we've always well, if we've I can always ask, been a partner. Yeah, well, what's the total town? I don't even know. What's the total town budget? Yeah. Um, it was twenty six million something. I can't get it. Twenty seven million around. Twenty seven million. Oh, twenty seven million for the town. Another twenty four or five million for the school, and then and then as well we have a cooperative uh, high school, so more money is, is spent there as well. I don't have that number because okay. that's not part of my budget. Yep, yeah, there's just and then we have the village district, right. which I supply. They have a separate to budget. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. oh, yes. I didn't oh, know. Yes. That. Okay. The village, I, Nancy specifically called me this past weekend and asked me to supply her with the money that we spend. And the village district uh, raises money through taxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spend about seven, about three quarters of a million dollars okay. on promoting this beach. And I gave her the breakdown, and if you'd like, I can send that to you as well, and I think I will, along with the uh, wall pictures, because fireworks every week, the sand sculpture event that's, that's very popular, uh, nightly concerts, um, uh, uh, many, there are yeah. many events. We pay for all that, and that helps bring people to this beach, and it makes this beach the unique beach that it is. The destination that it is. And the village district budget is primarily a promotional budget? Yes. Is that right? Yes. It's the marketing yes. promo. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually send that breakdown to you. Yeah, that'd be so great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, uh, yep. Sorry, I saw this gentleman over here. <coughs> waiting patiently. How are you? Thank you. I'm going to land my pool with you over here. Sure. Anybody else wants to try the channel 22? I want, to, uh, I want to welcome everybody who's never been here before to what some of us locals call the E Street Bandstand Complex. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I apply, could you, do you mind Charlie, saying? Charlie Preston. Thank you, Charlie. Yep, just want to make sure. 47 Glade Path. Um, when, I, when I bought my house, uh, it was the cheapest house, in, one of the cheapest houses in town, because that's what I could afford, right after the storm of 78. 
And then, um, well, the only thing that's changed in my house is when I bought it, it was in the swamp. Ten years later, it was in the marsh. Today, it's in the estuary. The only thing that's changed is my tax bill. The tides are coming up high. I paid four thousand dollars for a house that would fit in half this room. I mean, the big elephant in the rooms in, at the beach is elevation. That's the big. That's the big thing we got down here. And you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. But the other one we have is effluent. Okay, we got a treatment plan here. I think I said to the uh, public works director there, it was Lovett McGrath, good Irish ship kicker, 1935. He, you know, he was the sewer. He did everything in. He dug the trenches. He got the, you know, the treatment plant going. Look it up online. The Leverett uh, wastewater treatment plant, 1935. You know, the beach is 100, 120 years old. I'm talking as a taxpayer. I pay four thousand dollars for a house that would fit in half this room. But I have one bedroom and one bathroom. I can't afford anymore. Okay, what we have what we have now going on is public works for the treatment plant. They're talking upgrades of fifty to sixty million dollars. I'm not correct me. I don't know over a long time. Point. 45 million over how many years we're going to try to get some of this stuff done? <coughs> okay, but I think one thing we'll all be in agreement here if we if, if the toilet doesn't work, we're all out of business. It doesn't matter who you are resident, business, state of New Hampshire. Governor, if you said to me today, I'll give you 50 million, Charlie, what would you do with it? I'd say, scrap the bridge, scrap Ocean Boulevard and get this treatment plant going because without it, we're all up the creek. Mm -hmm. I'll let the president use the word. I won't use it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked on user-friendly issues for over half my life, okay? I started on bathrooms, and I go back, Governor, I, congratulations on being the youngest governor. I think that's exciting in this country. I started on bathrooms on the other side of the bridge. Bev Hollingsworth was the Senate president. Mm -hmm. And Jean Shaheen was the governor. And I took a picture of a porta party that was on the other side of the bridge. And I took DOT traffic counts. And I let people know how many people visit the first bathroom in the state of New Hampshire, which is a porta party behind a fence. Mm. They come a long way. You know? um, the Hampton River Bridge, you know, just to throw something out, like you said, I worked on the bathrooms. The next thing I worked on was the parking needs. Okay? In 2001, we had. 1,300 parking meters in Hampton, owned by the state, and not even a change machine on the beach. Every business you went to had a sign that said, no bathrooms, no meters, no parking, or we'll tow. We were the most user friendly, you know, and we really turned this thing around. The last thing I worked on was the state box license plate. It took five years to get it done because of your buy in, and it should have taken two, but Nancy got it in there, filed it. The state box plate, you know, make 400000 last year up to 600 So all those three things. Room and meals is making more than ever. Parking meters are making more than ever. And the state parks plates are making more than ever. And, and they get that money every year. The history of the Hampton River Bridge. Look it up. Okay? When they put the new one in in 1949, they put a toll on it of 15 cents. <clears throat> And I had to look this up this morning because I didn't even realize the governor was going to be here until this morning. I said, well, this is a good chance to meet. <laughs> they lowered it from 15 cents to 10 cents in 1956. On October 12, 1964, at 10 a.m., the Neil Underwood Bridge became a free. The toll was lifted after the amount raised in tolls paid the state's bond bill. Okay, and, I, and I, I'm a firm believer in, in you know, user fees, and everything I've worked on has been user friendly, but it's also now making money for all of us. The bridge, I looked, tried to look up DOT traffic counts today, and it said like 9,000, so was that like a daily thing? Probably it's an average of the year. Average for the year, daily. So if you multiply average that out, right. you know, times 365 days, you're into 3.2 million. Okay, so there's a way to make money but I like what we did in the past. We put a bridge in, when it was paid for, we took it out. Okay, but you can do a bridge, you can do the boulevard, but if that, if it, if it doesn't go down the pipe, we're all in trouble. We need help from federally, we need help from the state, and that treatment plan needs to be done and done ASAP because everything else is for naught without it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. <coughs> 
I know exactly where to come for when I really need to know what's going on in this town. <laughs> uh, Fred, I'm gonna, I, you've been patient back there. Want to come up? Trying to survive without the chair. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm Fred Rice. I live at 15 Heather Lane. Uh, I've been involved with things at the beach here for just about all my life. Um, I served uh, as a selectman, as the as a chair of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, as a state representative, and spent the last three years on the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission, mm -hmm. where we studied such things as climate change. And I'd like to spend a, a minute on that too. A couple of the things that have been mentioned here. One is we have more frequency of these storms than everything else. People are forgetting the storm in 1933. There are photographs that show the entire road ripped up all the way up to, to uh, halfway across Ocean Boulevard in the 30s. The hurricane of 38, Hurricane Carol in 1964. I rode that thing out on Labor Day weekend. Uh, the storm of 78. These are not new. They come and they go. We got this one because we had an astronomical high tide, one of the highest of the entire year, that coincided with a bitch of a storm that came up here, and we got hit hard. It's got nothing to do with climate change, it's weather. It's one season's weather. We've gone years without any storms, and, and we, need, we shouldn't be assigning that as the cause of it and diverting our efforts. We need to concentrate our efforts on what we can do right here. Now, Rooms and meals tax. That is a, you know, Nancy has sponsored more legislation on that. I've co-sponsored a bunch of it with them. But the same thing was true with changing that rooms and meals tax. It was true when we were getting the money from the state to build this building right here. I was the chairman of the commission at the time, and we got the okay. And I was the one that told Senator, what is it, Odom, was that his name? Odell. Odell, <coughs> Senator Odell, who chaired the commission. I said, if you're not going to give us all the money at once, don't do it at all, because nobody's going to come to Hampton Beach to visit the bathroom. So they gave us all of the money. But then I told the commission, if you want to get that money, we have got to convince people in Littleton and Hanover and Keene and Nashua that this is as beneficial to them as it is to us here in Hampton if we spend the money here in Hampton. Now, overall, it is, but you've got to step back and take the 50,000-foot view and look at the overall income to the state, not just, well, I made a dollar more here and I made five dollars more there. That doesn't count. We've got to look at a big picture on this. We're a small state, so we are much more obliged to look at a big picture for the entire state. When the money is taken from here, I've heard it said many times, Oh, the state is raping Hampton Beach for umpteen <coughs> hundreds of millions of dollars a year was said in print and on and on uh, in a meeting, in a public meeting. We had an excellent presentation from Parks uh, a few months ago, and they gave the report. And I asked the specific question: What do you take out of here net? The bottom line: After you meet your expenses and everything, what do you take? Out? Guess how much it was? Five hundred thousand dollars a year. Hardly hundreds of millions. So we need to get off of this exploding it out or conflating it with the tolls, which have nothing to do with Hampton Beach, or conflating it with other costs and everything else. That are, the Parks Department doesn't have anything directly to do with the budget in, in DOT and vice versa. So we can't conflate the two. The way we get taxed, our rooms and rooms <coughs> tax, is exactly the same way as it is done for every other bar, hotel, restaurant in the entire state. Are we supposed to carve out a little niche just for Hampton Beach because we're more special than the other people? That's almost impossible to do. There are 400 people up in that legislature that are all looking to, to watch out for their community too. So you've got to come to a meeting of the minds. You cannot carve out something special and think that the rest of the state is going to buy into it automatically. So it needs to be something that, w that will compromise with other people and, and reach a, a middle ground on it. The accolades that Hampton Beach has uh, received were mentioned here. And there are a bunch of them, there are a lot more of them too. Cleanest Beach, uh, Seafood Festival, the best thing, uh, best town to live in, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are all really good, important things. But we can't make money on those if we've got a voice in the background that says, this is tyranny, this is despotism, the beach is dirty, it's, they're raping us, they're doing this, thing. we can't do it. We've got to turn it down and start talking about what our common 
commonalities are, not what the differences are. The state is not out to rape Hampton Beach. The Parks Department has a budget to make, and they have a way that they are, by law, obliged to put that money out. A common ground <coughs> needs to be reached. The state does not create the trash that they pick out at their expense. So why should the town say, we're going to charge this for the state for its trash? Because they brought the trash in off the beach. The trash came from the stores that are the people, our neighbors, who make their living across the street right over here, and the people bring the trash over. I've talked with, with Phil and the uh, field about um, a, a different way to approach the trash collection on the beach. Maybe look at it. Maybe it's a good deal, but we'll get a couple more ideas on this. But we can't sit there and say, we're doing this, you're not doing that, and we're going to go after you, and we're going to, even to the point of suing. Quite frankly, for whatever else it's worth, I think the idea of a town suing the state over sharing costs is ludicrous. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. We should be sitting down and finding the common ground instead of sitting there throwing rocks and hand grenades, and even worse sometimes, from a distance. I used to have a big thing with Phil Bryce about the parking fees. Charlie, uh, you're, you're probably aware of this. I used to think that they charged too much. They charged too much to rent this room. They charged too much for all of the other stuff around here. And the, I was on a committee that was supposed to look at these fees. I sat down with Phil for a couple of hours here in this building. And we went over every single fee that he charges here and elsewhere all across the state. We went across the summary of all the data that he had collected from all of the civilian or private sector uh, businesses that, that do the same thing. Parking, hotel stuff, everything else. The rental of rooms. I walked out of that meeting as a believer that we've got a better deal working with the state than we do if we were working with all of the other private entities that are all around here. So we've, we've got to get away from this, this contentious business of, I don't like you, and I'm going to blame you. I didn't say it was your fault, I'm going to blame you. That's, that's what we've been doing lately. We can't mm -hmm. do that. We've got to sit down and talk with these people and get agreements on the little things that we can do. Uh, if we don't, we're never going to get Ocean Boulevard to be done. The bridge, hey, we had an agreement on the bridge. 10 years ago, I think on how we were going to proceed on the thing. Well, it's now, maybe it's on the horizon now. It takes a while. Some of these things are going to take a while to get done. But I hope that everybody in this room, especially if you're in an elected position, if you're in an appointed position of responsibility, that you do everything that you can to meet with the people that you're talking with instead of throwing rocks and hand grenades at them. It's the only way that things are going to get done. Great. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Hey, everybody. Uh, good evening. My name is Rick Freiberg from TEC. Um, I'm a, a small business owner of an engineering company. And uh, we're located actually right across the street at the casino. I think we might even be the first year-round tenant to that building. Um, and, you know, about four years ago, five years ago, we started planning to expand our business. And we identified Seacoast New Hampshire as a great area to do it. Um, now I'm originally from New Hampshire, so I'd like to charge to, to, to get an office located up this way because I know what a jewel it is here at Hampton Beach. Um, most companies, though, in our position relocate to Portsmouth or something like that. Um, and we were drawn to Hampton because of the investments that the state and the town have both made. Um, you know, we, we view downtown Hampton as great potential. We see a quaint town. Um, we view, obviously, the amenities here at the beach and, and especially uh, some of the more recent efforts like the plowing and the sidewalk clearing. Our amenities that our employees get to enjoy. And, you know, I'm happy to say four years ago, we weren't sure how this was going to go. Uh, but we met a lot of nice people, um, Nancy and John and Bob and Chuck. Um, they really helped us integrate into this community. So I think in the spirit of collaboration, which I think is sort of the goal of, of, of what tonight is, you know, the state partnership, partnering with the town, I think it, just to share one small business success story, um, you know, four years ago we had zero employees here, uh, civil engineering employees, so people making a decent income with, with good disposable income. And I'm happy to say that actually we're about a month away from finishing our expansion plans uh, that will have up to 25 new employees right. here. And we're drawn here because of the amenities. We're drawn here because we, we, we love Hampton as a town. Um, we're drawn here because obviously there's this wonderful amenity, the beach that's here. Um, but we're also drawn here because, um, you know, Sal has his vision for a mixed-use project here at the beach. And we're in the business of trying to attract millennials who are, are craving these types of amenities. And we think that the beach is a potential uh, success story 
um, for year-round business as well as a seasonal business, which we've all experienced for many years. Um, so I just want to share that uh, insight and thank you all for your time. Thank you. Chuck Rage, I'm a chairman of the Hampton Beach Village District. Um, I want to state, uh, I want to thank the governor for being here, first of all, but um, this is what we need is us getting together. Uh, the Village District spends, as we were saying, three quarters of a million dollars to bring people to Hampton Beach. And the only way we can be successful is our partnership with the, the town of Hampton Beach <coughs> and with the state of New Hampshire. Now, I've been on this board close to 14 years, I think, and I've been a businessman down here a long time, not as long as some, but longer than others. And I've seen the state being very difficult to work with a long time ago. And what I see now is a huge corporation. Um, we have these beautiful buildings. We have work being done. And I think the, the, way, um, the way to get things done is to have meetings like this and not to work in the court system, but for all of us to get together, round table it, pick five or six people that, that can, uh, from the town, the state, village district or business community and work together and um, I, I think we can move forward. I think I think it's just a lot easier if we, we sit around like this and, and hashing out the problems that we have. I don't think the problems are, are big. I think what, what the issue is is, is uh, communication. So I, I appreciate you coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Well, as always, I wasn't going to speak, but uh, first of all, Governor, I want to thank you for being here. I'm Sheila Frank for 88 Kings Highway. I've lived in uh, this community uh, for 39 years now. I live at North Beach, so I'm very familiar with North Beach and with Main Beach and with the town. And in all those years and in all my involvement, and we've had for the commissioners down, but we've never had a meeting like this with the governor coming down. And I remember when we had the first meeting, uh, this was uh, quite a while ago with George Balt, mm -hmm. and we took some of the commissioners around, and they had never been down here. Mm -hmm. So that was a big eye-opener, and we knew at that time we have a communication problem. And I think we still have a communication problem. And I think a meeting like this goes a long way. We have so many entities in here, as you've heard. We have the village district. We have the town. We have the beach. We have the various commissions. And everyone seems to be driving their own agenda and forgetting that we are all part of the state of New Hampshire. That's, that's the mother load right there. And, you know, if we can't work together in all those entities and realize that if it's good for Hampton, if it's good for Hampton Beach, it's going to be good for the state of New Hampshire. I mean, you've heard about all the good publicity that this area has gotten. You can look out here, and it's one of the most beautiful beaches that you can find. We only have 17 miles of shore, and people have just come in on a Sunday afternoon. You can have to get on Ocean Boulevard because they want to take a ride up the coast road. Now, they don't just ride up and go home. They stop. They into the shops. They have something to eat. So it's very important that we keep the lines of communication open and that we're not constantly running down the state or the town or the beach. We all have a vested interest here. Now, I would like my taxes to go down as I talk to the town manager and the chairman of the board. It's not going to happen. But I don't mind paying taxes if I know that the money is being utilized and utilized properly. And that is also your job. Mm -hmm. You get the money. It's in the general budget. I know the parks money is not in the general budget. And that's something that you have to communicate to people. They don't know that. A lot of people do, but most people do not know how the state parks are funded here, which is why it's hard to get the vote and conk it when you're trying to do something with state park money. So my, my advice to you, Governor, is to keep the chain of communication open. That is the most important thing you can do, and we'd love to see more meetings like this. And you never know what you're going to hear when you come to him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. Appreciate it. Good job. Good 
evening, uh, John and I, and the Governor, welcome to uh, Hampton Beach and to all the state officials that have come here tonight. Um, I just have a couple of comments, and then I, I, I guess I'm going to be very direct, and, and that directness comes from, Governor, your initial comments tonight. First of all, state parks, uh, <coughs> my role when I was chairman of the uh, Beach Commission, and even now my role as the president of the chamber. State Parks, I think, does a great job. And, and so when you come all down here and you show us what you're doing, you're singing to the choir. I mean, we, we know because we see. Same thing with DOT, in my opinion. DOT has, <laughs> has worked with us hand in hand, both in the Beach Commission and on a number of different projects that we have seen here taking place along Ocean Boulevard. I think, I think one of the things that, you know, we understand and it was through your efforts, Governor, when you were executive council, to take the Hampton Beach Ocean Boulevard project into reality. You can never forget when Mr. Welch, myself, and Senator Stiles went to Washington, and we were looking for $16 million to redo Ocean Boulevard. And they said to us, great project, but how, you're, you're not even in the state's 10-year plan, so it's not a priority within the, in the state. So go away and come back when it is a priority. And that, you made that happen. And a lot of other people made it happen, too. To, to, to me right now, one of the major projects, not the, not the major project, but one of the major projects is Ocean Boulevard reconstruction. With that $8.5 million, I think it's critical for all of us to realize that it is just a couple of years away. And to, to go with your comment, Governor, you know, right now in the 10-year plan, it is in construction in the 20s, 2020s. I think in terms of compromise with the town, if somehow through legislative uh, action and through executive council and to your efforts, if we can move this construction money up, we have always pledged, the Beach Commission has always pledged that whatever money we can get from the state, we'll go to the federal government for matching money to make this project work. To, to compromise with the uh, the town. The town has already voted, the selectmen has voted, that once these new sidewalks are done, they will take over the maintenance of those sidewalks. So the sooner those sidewalks are built, the sooner the town takes over that maintenance of it. So that, that's just one thing that I think one needs to consider in your thoughts going forward. Drainage, as selectmen uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Regina, it's, it's Regina. Drainage and flooding is, is, is critical in this whole area. And that has to be looked at as a major, major project, not only within the town, but within the state also. But finally, and here's where I'm gonna to come to my final recommendation. Um, you were gracious enough to come here tonight in this public forum to listen to a lot of people that have complimented what's been going on here. And those compliments, I think, are sincere and true. But I think we need to take a next step because we all know that follow the news, follow what's going on here in the town of Hampton, that come January 31st, there's going to be a lawsuit that has been going, it's going to go to the state. The Board of Selectmen has instructed the, the town attorney to have a lawsuit ready to be prepared to be submitted into court January 31st. How do we stop that? How do we say time out on that? My recommendation, Governor, is you take this effort a step further. And you sit down with the town officials. You bring in your commissioners, town officials bring in the support of selectmen. And you have a meeting, not a public meeting, but a private meeting to say, all right, what is going on? What are the issues? Is it the issues of the sidewalks? Is it, is it the issues of services on the beach for public safety? Is it room and meals tax that should be totally separate from other the, the other issues here? But what are the issues? I, as a, as a person here in Hampton, really still don't understand what this lawsuit is about. I know people have talked about sidewalks. I know people have talked about services, public safety services on the beach. And I, and I also hear people talking about meals and rooms. But let's get to the bottom of what we're talking about. And let's see if that lawsuit becomes more of a discussion than a lawsuit. 
Because I don't want to see the town of Hampton personally sue the state of New Hampshire. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you John. Um, I guess I would I would uh, interject here and say that's exactly why I set this meeting up. Uh, we could do it privately, I understand, but I, I tend to try to be as transparent as possible, and I think it's important that everyone understands what it is. I agree with you, John. I've heard the rumors. I don't understand what the lawsuit's about exactly. And up until now, I haven't heard anyone step up here in the past hour and be able to explain exactly what the lo what is driving the lawsuit, the amount of money. We, we talk. I think we're talking about great things today. We're talking about Route 1. 1A, we're talking about drainage, uh, we're talking about the wastewater treatment plant, um, and we have, uh, and I didn't recognize him earlier, but we, we did do have Gene Forbes here from DES, um, that he's been driving a lot of the issues in terms of not just the treatment plant, but the, the pipe and the marsh, uh, and where we go, and uh, I think Charlie brought up a lot of very good points there. Um, and, and obviously it's great to hear from the business community and appreciating, I think, the partnership that's here, but I, I wish I could tell you what this, I, I don't know, I think, look, this is it. This is it. The governor is here. I brought two commissioners here. I brought directors here. I brought the head of parks here. This is the A team to have this discussion because I don't I don't see why there would be a lawsuit. Um, and again, I've heard a lot of names attached to this potential lawsuit that apparently didn't even show up tonight, which I'm quite appalled by. Appalled by. And I think again, I'll speak very directly. I think that speaks very clearly as to the legitimacy of the complaints being filed. And if there's something really here, this is the forum to have it. Um, there's a reason why I'm not home with my kids having dinner right now. It's because this is important. Uh, and I think the one thing that I, I do, I appreciate that the town is clearly appreciating is that it's about, as Sheila said, communication, communication, communication. And what the folks here at Parks um, and even the folks at DOT have really done to change that mentality, to change that culture, and really open up a positive communication, to have amenities here full time, to have staff here full time, to not be shuttering up Hampton Beach, to really make it uh, as best we can a year-round attraction and have that complemented by the business side. That's tremendous. And I give them, I, I don't take the credit, I give them all the credit in the world for that. But to your point, John, this is, this is what I'm here for. Um, I mean, the, the hour is basically up, and, and I'm not I'm not <coughs> seeing a whole lot out there. So, um, I guess what I would say it, it, to, to to close things, if we if I may, um, if there are additional comments, let us know. Right? Uh, you can't just work in a vacuum. And I know we have one of the selectmen here, um, but you, you can't work in a vacuum, and you can't just do things privately and just behind closed doors. This is about open, transparent communication, understanding what the issues are on the state level, letting the people in the town of Hampton understand and appreciate what the issues are. And I got to tell you, if John Nahan doesn't understand what the issues are in the town, it's very likely 99% of the people that live here don't understand what the issues are, right? So that's a communication issue I think that really probably needs to be addressed here in the town as well. Right? So we want to we want to do our part. We believe in the partnership. Can we change the room and meals tax like that? No, we can't. Can the legislature? Sure, absolutely. And that's a discussion to be had to Fred's point. It's a very serious discussion. You have to understand there's a, every there's 400 other folks in the legislature fighting hard for their communities. Uh, there's 93 other properties out there in all of those communities that are fighting for their dollars as well. Uh, I think, I got to tell you, I, I think the state has done an immense job making the investment here when you look at the amount of money and where we're going to go. The idea of moving 1A up, I think that's a great idea. And that's something I really think we, we do need to look at. And I think that's something that we can work with the legislature and try to move that up. That makes perfect sense, frankly. Uh, there has to be a pull. We can't move it up without moving something back. So we're going to have to figure out what that take is going to be. It's give and take. Um, but given the severity of the floods and, and what we're talking about here, you, obviously I, I appreciate you recognizing my commitment to it as executive council years ago, making sure we at least got the engineering funds and got the process started. But uh, introduced, I hounded yeah. the sky <laughs> relentlessly yeah. uh, until we got at least the initial phases uh, put into the 10-year highway plan. But to your point, uh, let's get it done, right? Let's get it done. Um, I mean, with that, I, I guess I'll, I'll close the public comment part of the hearing. I don't see any, any other hands in the air. Uh, I see a half hand. I, yeah, a absolutely, come on. And I'll make, I'll, 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 we'll make this the last one, just to be respectful of people's time. Yeah. Sure. Of course. No, that's okay. My grandparents came to Hampton Beach in 1920, and the honeymoon had never left. So that's why. <laughs> I just want to thank you for coming here. I want to thank for the, both, you know, the kind of communication. I think it's really crucial. I don't want to repeat everything that's already been said, but I might offer one uh, suggestion or observation. It seems to me that right now there's a bit of contention over um, the source of repayment for the bonds for the seawall. I, I would suggest that the seawall actually is um, 
part of highway infrastructure. That without a seaway, a seawall, there is no Route One A, and that it's actually more appropriate that the road toll be used to pay for that. That it come from the highway trust fund to maintain that One A than it is to to kind of raid the funds that are being raised by visitors to the beach through the parking. And I think that you might consider in your future budget proposals that the source of funding to pay down the bonds for the seawall be come from the road toll and that that From money, federal highway funds. Federal highway fund, from, you from could the juice, talk about capital budget. The capital, you know, oh, from the capital, capital budget. budget. And, 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 and we pay for part of it. The gas tax pays for, you know, it's a seawall pays for roads, pays for bridges. Without a seawall, there is no sure. there is no road, and it's that it's, that it's the appropriate source, and that that revenue be freed up. That's now coming from the parks department to <coughs> to be reinvested in the parks, and also I, I would suggest to be to be shared here to help underwrite infrastructure that the town helps to provide to keep the, the parks in place, and that's something I, I would suggest you take a look at. Great. No, thank you, Randy. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, with that, again, I just want to reiterate, I, I just want to appreciate everyone for coming and being, being part of the process. Let us know what we can do and keep doing. Um, uh, I'm going to close with my conclusion here. Uh, the fact that the town wants to somehow sue us in the next couple weeks, yet we really aren't talking about what the lawsuit is really even about, uh, again, I think speaks to the validity of the lawsuit, and, and I, I strongly urge the town to reconsider, or, or at least let us know uh, some of the details about, about what we're talking about. Um, there's a, I guess, a $27 million budget in the town. Um, every dollar counts. Every dollar has to come out of our, our property tax, and nobody likes to see their property taxes raised. Um, we've had a great partnership. Uh, ups, the kind of the ebbs and flows, ups and downs since 1933. Uh, I, from what I'm hearing here today, uh, we're at one of the the real um, the real peaks, I think, in terms of having the communication, having the presence here. Things are going well. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Doesn't mean we can't always. Uh, do better, uh, but we have a great team in place to make sure that we can continue on a lot of the successes we've built on in just the past couple of years here. We want to keep doing that. So let us know how we can do better, and I guess I would just say thank you very much for everyone for, uh, for coming tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you.